Hi everybody, it's Simon here from Burial I Think. Um, this evening we're joined um, all the way from Los Angeles by Fabrizio Grossi. Good evening Fab, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you Simon. Hi everybody. All right there. Um, and how's everything going over there in Los Angeles Fab? Uh, well, the sun is up. Um, leaf blowers are going around the neighbors. <laughs> so it all sounds good, but I guess we're waiting for the thunderstorm of tomorrow, which is election day. So, all oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we've, I think we've had the bad weather today because it's never stopped raining where I live in the UK. Oh, I'll take some rain though. All I'll right. take it. <laughs> I, it's not a novelty over here, but I guess for you guys, it's different. No, the problem is that when it starts, it just then it never, I mean, it. It's like generally, I mean, now it's the seasons are all whatever, all messed up. But generally there was that uh, the month of February and uh, early March is yeah. just constant, you know. And, you know, the rain that comes down that month or those six weeks is just ridiculous. I mean, and obviously the city, it's not like in the UK that you guys are used to, yeah, the proper infrastructure, the sewers and all of that. Here, mm -hmm. the cities are not set up to... I guess welcome the much rain at the same time because when it rains it rains i mean oh, yeah. it, it rains like crazy and then for the rest of the year nothing <laughs> so. never mind i mean like you'll probably know um in england we're about to go into lockdown again for a second time um mm -hmm. how have you been coping with things in los angeles how's it been going in terms of the restrictions well uh it's you know uh, again i don't, I don't want to make it a, a political thing but unfortunately the lack of general uh, leadership throughout the country, it kind of like really made it uh, very impossible to deal this in a, in, with a, in a, in a proper way. Because mm -hmm. um, it's not only the federal government uh, that kind of like play cat and, ma plays cat and mouse with the, govern with the governors of the, each state, then the governors. Uh, kind of like almost like leaves it up to the mayor of some of the biggest city or the largest counties Mm -hmm. to deal with this so i mean if you think about it los angeles county hosts about 20 22 million people yeah. and this probably is going to be the la one of the last uh, county to fully reopen you know in terms of like what i would like to do you know shows and all that kind of stuff yeah. in the states however uh, we were like super locked down i mean uh, spent like two and three months at home and all of that during march april june and all of it yeah i mean Places are open, but you cannot eat inside restaurants and all of that. So it's functioning, but, you know, with, with limitation, right? But yeah. while, even while we were in the lockdown, uh, then you will go to Ventura, which is actually from the part of Los Angeles where I live, because it's like 30 miles north of Hollywood. Okay. It's about an half hour. So it's easy for me to go to a different county and to the beach in Ventura or Santa Barbara than not go to Santa Monica. Right. Well, what would hold back a family or a group of people Mm -hmm. from los angeles or from hollywood to go to ventura because even tour you could have gone to the restaurant you could have gone to the beach and do everything else so i mean this kind of like uh, open to interpretation thing is, i think it just really messed everything up in yeah. terms of the organizations and then obviously there is the other things the mask and then no mask and who's just trying to steer these things their own way so yeah. uh, the lack of uh, you know the not really direct uh, communications and all of it and everybody's kind of like have their own interpretation of it so it's kind of a mess um I'm glad that a lot of colleagues of mine somehow started to do some live things and just get busy in terms of like playing with audience. I'm more like in the East Coast and Upper East Coast. My, my brother, Joe Luis Walker, it's performing. My friends from uh, um, Blueberry Smoke too, but it's kind of like drive-in or limited cities and all of it. So it's, yeah. eh, I don't know. It's just, I mean, of course, it's better than nothing, but it, it's, just, it's not like the real thing. And uh, to be honest with you, I really don't know. I think that we will have to wait after the results of the elections. I think we will have a better understanding where we're going because right now everything is just so politicized that yeah. we not really get a clear grasp on what's going on. You know? It's kind of a little bit similar in our country that we're kind of, we're dealing with very, very similar things because we've had um, various different tiers for different restrictions. So you've had places like Manchester that have been put under a greater lockdown and then you've got areas that are bordering them that have got um, um, a much lesser lockdown but it's not stopping people moving around so it, it's made it a little bit difficult but um, in the same token you've got your election going on we've got Brexit going on as well as the, the pandemic so um, there are so many distractions aren't there of course well you know what for once you know I mean I'm a, 
I was born in Italy. Uh, I left, you know, in my late teens, but uh, um, I'm obviously Italian. You know, Italians are not really famous for organization, you know, for a lot of other things, but not for organization. Uh -huh. However, I have to say that the way they handled the, lo the first lockdown, it was just, I mean, really harsh, really strict. However, yeah. you could have done everything that you wanted to do within your own little city or uh, town, but yeah. you could have not left. You could have, you could have not leave. I mean, in other words, you could have not drove to the next by town, whatever it is. Yeah. But you know, doing it this way, uh, doing it that way, you are somehow at the opportunity to, you know, to go out and just, you know, walk the dog, exercise, whatever it is, and just kind of like uh, limit whatever was the traffic to your center. So those cases, you know, yeah. the cases that were in a little town, they will stay there. I mean, it, it just actually, the other, and I was surprised that, you know, Italians that, you know, generally always trying to find a way around, you know, things, uh, kind of like they stuck to it. And, you know, I'm sorry, but the results shows. So yeah. for once, you know, I guess we got it right. <laughs> yeah, at least they put out a clear instruction and it worked out, hopefully, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyways, we're here today to talk about your new project, um, which is the Soul Garage Experience. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a single out which came out on October the 16th, which was right mm -hmm. down below. Um, how, how has the reaction been for that? How did it go? Actually, I'm really, really happy about the, the reaction of the song. I mean, it's just like, it's just, it's going to be a long out because I decided not to do it with a label, but to do it independently. Yeah. So, um, and uh, I have a lot of, you know, friends, among, you know, famous artists and famous colleagues. And, you know, a lot of fans, but, you know, the fans are related to probably my work with the production with some of those artists and also with my other band, Supersonic Blues Machine. I never done a solo record or nothing. So I kind of like pretty much start from zero. So, I mean, just to kind of like remind people who I am, uh, it's just like, and who the hell is this guy? Uh, I says, oh, the other, this, ah, okay. So it kind of like, is going to take a long time, but I was quite impressed about uh, the super warm welcome. Uh, I mean, it, fans that heard it you know had nothing positive about it uh press and media are really really cool and the the really the thing that really um i guess made me proud and really uh kind of like uh made me appreciate the whole thing more is just that people are getting the message it's not only the song itself because i mean it's got a new song cool oh yeah we sing along with it it's just the song it's a very particular thing like all this project and people are talking to me about the video, what the video means, the lyrics, which was what I wanted to do in the first place. And I'm really, really, really happy about it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great that you've connected with people already without them maybe knowing so much about the backstory of it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm well, um, the, the, overall, the overall thing is like, this is something that, I mean, uh, for would, would, people that don't know me, uh, I mean, obviously I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bass player. Um, in this record and in this project, I also sang. Knowing fully, I mean, I have a couple of other singers in the band. We wanted to do something like very 60s and 70s. I don't see myself as a singer. Of course, I always sang my Super Sonic Blues Machine demos or some of the other production stuff that we're putting together. But I, I, you know, I'm far from being a singer. But, you know, I guess necessity. And, and you know, we're having fun. And I guess as long as you can deliver the message, it's cool. Um, and, um, but I'm, beside the music thing, I'm, I'm an activist. I'm always involved with charities, um, with, you know, I wouldn't call it necessarily civil rights, but social rights and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. injustice and everything. And I'm very, very loud about it, very vocal. Um, and uh, this project, it's like, I, I could not do more than that, you know, uh, with Supersonic or Supersonic, even though, okay, I produced the band, you know, it's my baby too. And, you know, I handle most of the songwriting, even though now with Chris and, and yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a different thing. Yeah. Uh, what Chris Barris that mean? Okay. Hey, Chris, what's up? Um, you know, I didn't want it to kind of like turn supersonic into supersonic blues machine into like uh, the other side of me because, you know, people that know me maybe on the, the hard rock scene and all of that, they will know my real and first love, which was Bob Marley and black music. And, uh, uh, already with California Soul, with Supersonic Blues Machine, we kind of like, there was like a huge influx of R&B and 60s sounds like that, that actually was very well received, but I could tell that it's like, uh, it's, this is, it sounds like more of uh, Fabrizio Blues Machine and Supersonic Blues Machine. So I wanted them to, get, uh, to take it away. And even though uh, I'm really happy with the lyrics of Supersonic, because there's always the, 
the John Lennon and the, uh, you know, Bob Dylan reference and positive universal love and all of that. Okay. I kind of like, especially for this year and the time in which we're living in, I think I need to go with something a little bit heavier, something like Tom Morello will embrace because, you know, people like it or not. I'm sorry to disappoint a lot of them. That's exactly where I'm coming from. Right. Uh, okay. And, and um, you know, and I think this is good. I mean, uh, the fact also that I'm uh, kind of like uh, putting myself also wearing the director and editor of the videos, uh, give me the opportunity to kind of like structure a video uh, to help narrate the story and, and use the images that I want to, that I think they're necessary for me to get the message across. So it's kind of like it's a multi-experience. That's why we call it experience. Because even yeah. when you come to see us play live, it's not just, oh, it's just a show, you know, these great musicians and all of that. It, well, yeah, but it, there is something else. And, you know, being a big fan of uh, black music uh, from when I was little and after moving to this country, uh, I kind of like I became very uh, into, uh, very well aware of what's going on. Uh, I read and I educated myself about it and a uh, big supporter of the whole movement, even though it started, you know, when I was not even born yet. Yeah. But unfortunately it continues because that, 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 that struggle, it's not only, and then again, it's not only again now at this point, 2020, it's just a black thing or not. It's just, you know, this is a, a country of immigrant and, you know, uh, the cultures and the results of everything is the melting pot that all the peoples from around the world, their parents and their histories are coming in. I mean, you, I don't care about what a lot of my co-citizens will say. You're not an American unless you're native. Right. If, okay. if you're not native, at some point in life during the last few centuries, you came from somewhere. So, you know, uh, the result of it uh, is just a, a lot of the great things that America was able to accomplish uh, aligned just in, in, in that uh, interaction between the different heritages and ethnic cultures. And we're kind of like we're in a point where, I don't know, kind of like about to lose them or about to fully embrace them. And I think it was just a good time for me to be really vocal about it. Most definitely. I mean, the, the single comes from the new album, which is Counterfeited Blues. And, and obviously, you've got a wealth of, of great musicians on that album. Um, what can you tell us about your personnel that you've brought on board? Uh, well, see, the thing is, um, after uh, like a few years ago, um, we, uh, with uh, Super Sunny Blues Machine 1.0, <laughs> right. we, we headlined a couple of festivals in the Midwest. And... Uh, one evening, particularly, uh, Kenny couldn't, Kenny Aronoff being our drummer, yeah. could not perform uh, with us because it uh, uh, was uh, contractually bounded to perform with John Fogarty from a previous year. And John was canceling the show and presenting it. They had some issues with the production. Well, when they confirmed it, it was too late for us to cancel you know, right. uh, our show and uh, to Kenny to walk out of it. So we asked our dear friend, Stephen Perkins, Mm -hmm. drummers extraordinary from you know founder member of Jane's Addictions Porn of Papyrus but also an history with Infectious Grooves and you know Nine Inch Nails No Doubt and a bunch of other great bands to, to come along he, he joined us for a few days um, we rehearsed a few times like uh, went between sound checks and all of that and we ended up playing uh, our main guest for that night was Robin Ford okay and Robert is a, is, is a great guy because besides being the musician that he is it's probably the one of the best educator yeah. that I know. It's just like his, his generosity with the music and kind of getting people to kind of like step outside their boundaries. Okay. It, it's incredible. And uh, he got everybody in the band, to like especially uh, Alex, our keyboard player, um, Alex Alessandroni, and myself to solo with him and all of it, which is generally something we don't do. I mean, I never... Yeah. No C bass, you know, so I mean, it's, it's that's not my head. It's just I don't play jazz, you know, so it's, it's not that thing. However, we got into that night that turned into like a mega, mega jam, even around our own songs and around Robin's songs. And at the end of the night, Robin calls me and says, Hey, Fab, you know what? I'm so used to you and play with Kenny, which is great because, you know, fucking this is solid and all of that. But with Perkins, it sounds like almost like another band. You, Perkins, and Alex together when you play it sounds like the doors but funky yeah. which is actually a great thing because both especially perkins and i are beyond even though i was born in milan and 
Perkins is like a native Los uh, Angelinos. Yeah. We have this uh, incredible love for California sounds from the 60s. Mm -hmm. And we ended up in starting a side project called Drop the Needle. We played around town and incredibly successful, meaning we, we, ended, we kind of like really connected with people with what we're doing. We're doing other people's music, okay? Covers, but all rearranged. And that actually was what really pushed me to say, you know what? I think it's a due time. I have a bunch of songs that also were uh, accumulated throughout my, you know, all these last years working with productions that are, sometimes I started to record a song and then I start another project or whatever. And I always gave myself excuses on not to move forward. But this kind of like was like a real push. And obviously I needed to have Steven and Steven were playing together. So Steven is going to be, you know, our drummer on, uh, you know, live on tour. And he plays on several different tracks on the record, right. but also on the record, Sorry if I made the story long, but you know, it's just it's, know. it's not only my solo project, and that's the reason why it's called Soul Garage Experience. I mean, Fabrizio Garcia Soul Garage Experience, because even though I'm happy with my name, you know, very recognizable, because there's not many Fabrizio roaming around the streets of LA, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think musically is as cool as an Anglo name. You know, you got like, I don't know, uh, you know, Bob Marley, you're hearing, or uh, whatever, Bruce Springsteen, Fabrizio yeah. Grassi, sounds like more somebody that would open a pizzeria than, you know, more than <laughs> a rock band or a blues band. So, uh, and at the end of the day, what we're able to offer live is just not me, it's, it's a band. So I think it was the, the least I could do is kind of like come up with a cool name mm -hmm. that represented, you know, what we're playing. And soul is the main influence, even more than blues, it's soul music mm -hmm. uh, with all these uh, different colors and sides and takes and it's an experience so again uh, perkins is our main live drummer but also on the record i have a couple of tracks uh, that i recorded with kenny aronoff uh, another dear friend of mine anthony jr mora is a, a nashville based drummer we do so many productions together uh, incredible cat and also there is a song with uh, the great herman matthews on drums um herman's you know from from everybody from stevie wonder to tower of power Fantastic. And that's a very particular track. It's very, very relevant to what's going on today. But then there is a bunch of other crazy cats. I have a Diamond Mix is a, a finalist from American Idol. Uh, he's a singer, not like me. He is a real singer. You know, I call him the, the new soul queen. It is fantastic. And he sings on uh, the majority of their songs uh, of the record. You guys are going to start hearing him. You know, I think from single number three, because we're going to be releasing a single every couple of months, you know, yeah, every month and a half or so. And um, Desmond also will play some of the Ammons. I still have Alex Alessandroni playing keyboards with us. And uh, uh, there's several different guitar players playing in the band. Alistair Green is doing a nice cameo. Ryan McCarvey, uh, a, a bunch of cats. But um, this young dude that is kind of like my protege and also Steve Weiss and Vernon Reed's uh, protege, his name is Derek Day. I knew you were going to say that. Excuse <laughs> me? I knew you were going to say that. Dude, Derek is, it's just, dude, is the newfound Jesus, I say, you know, in a, in a respectful way. He is it's, most definitely, he's incredible to watch, isn't he? And he's, I know, uh, like, um, he's playing on the single, it, it just adds a whole different vibe to the whole song oh yeah. as well. You know what, the main thing is, like, and I always like to tell the story about how I met Derek, because that's, it just kind of, like, I think it helps to understand why. I mean, I could, of course, reach out to, any one of the good, great players or blues yeah. players that we have, you know, playing with us with Supersonic of other friends here. However, I wanted to get something that was, that will speak to different uh, people and, and age groups. You know, yeah. Perkins and I are on the same age. And even though, of course, music is ageless, I mean, we have a demographic that we're mainly associated with. But I think the music that we do, especially nowadays, is very kind of like timeless. Yeah, Derek sure. is just something else. I, I met, uh, Derek on the street of Santa Monica. We have a, a part of Santa Monica. It's called Third Street Promenade, right. where uh, you cannot drive. You know, it's just like it's just pedestrian only. There, tables, restaurants, and stuff like that. And there is a lot of streets performers. My daughter told me we we're checking out something in a store. She says, "Hey, Dad, you need to come to see this guy." And I thought it was one of the usual people that do backflips and all of that. And I'm going out, and I'm seeing this kid. You know, like, uh, you know, they look like somebody fresh out of an anthrax show, you know, with yeah, yeah. shorts, long hair, just jumping on. And he had this microphone, you know, on a stand, little PA, little guitar, uh, guitar amp. And he, and he was playing and singing to Sweet Child of Mine of Guns N' Roses. Yeah. The thing is, like, he was singing Axel part, but like Robert Plant would have sang it. Yeah. And, and he was playing the Slash's part like Steve I would have played. And I was just blown away. I stayed there for like an half hour watching him. So I went there when he, finished his first set and you know i give him my 
number. And I says, hey, man, Chad, you know, you know, I'm a music producer. I'm a bass player. I love your playing. Why don't we talk? He was 16 back then, okay? So, yeah. But he was already up there. So we kind of like became friends. I'm not going to tell everything that happened up to that. But, you know, fast forward in a couple of years, two or three years ago, we started to play together around and a few different things. And that was just the, the obvious choice. I mean, I've been trying with Steve Vai and with Vernon Reed to help him out. Uh, he's got a couple of different situations going on. And I'm really happy that, uh, you know, now with his new, his new single uh, is, you know, is making waves because he deserves it. He's just like one of those guys, incredible. Just so you know, his, uh, his nickname or how people refer to him among, you know, my colleagues, producers or players and stuff like that, they're a little bit more like my age than okay. he is. This is like, oh, the kid with the energy. Because that's him. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's just, it, I don't know. It's always with a smile. And I love that because, you know, that's the last thing that you want to do when you go on tour with people and just get with people that are like always miserable and everything. This guy, as soon as he enters the room and it's just like, ta-da, Christmas morning. You know, like, hey, happy birthday. It's like always laughing, <laughs> always, you know, always up for it. So that's, I think, is just a great injection of positive and, uh, positive and um, you know, energy. I suppose as a musician as well, you couldn't really ask for a, a better step into the, the world of showbiz, could you? If you were sort of mixing in your circles and with Steve Vai and with Ted Nugent and all of these people that he's been playing with. Oh, yeah. And, and actually, the good thing is, like, uh, I didn't need a, a, a blues, blues player because, yeah. um, again, this is not that. I mean, there are great, like Alistair Green, who plays on another song on the record. Yeah. That actually right now is available already uh, as a B-side on um, out of so, uh, out of uh, counterfeited blues. Yeah, um, Alistair is just a phenomenal blues guitar player. But you know, in terms of like the live and everything, uh, Derek loves blues and loves R and B. But it's he's coming in with his own. He, the, guy, the kid is from Mars. Let's be honest, okay? Yeah. And he's bringing the Martian attitude to it. So anything you give him. It just goes through the filter and it kind of like Derek Day is a <laughs> yeah. the, the whatever he's playing. And I love that because then it doesn't sound like me. Even there's plenty of blues and soul already in the track, in the song, yeah, in yeah. the lyrics and all of it. Just needed something to make it a little bit fresh. And I think it is, bring, is bringing right that element, you know. For sure. I mean, it needed to bring his own personality to it. And it kind of, it doesn't take anything away from the song either. It, it just sort of sits seamlessly within it. So I think it's a, it's a really smart play on both parts really yeah and that's why i'm kind of like extremely pissed that this year went the way it went i mean for the world for everybody and yeah. for all my colleagues i mean we had a, a long theater tour and festivals booked with super sonic but i also had a long series of shows booked with soul garage experience even though music was not out yet is that because uh, when you see soul garage experience live uh it's not me and a bunch of people backing me up Dude, everybody is like, it's, it's like the Avengers, yeah. you know, it's like you got Captain America, you got the Hulk, you got, it's just everybody's coming in like with larger than life personality. I'm just taking myself out of the equation. Yeah. Perkins on stage alone, it could handle two hours because it's just like, <laughs> and everybody with a smile. So that I, and I really like that. I you think know. that's really exciting, though, because that kind of reminds me of going to see, you know, like um, instrumental players, you know, the likes of Vai and Satriani and all of these people. They've, they've all got wonderful musicians within the ranks that are all well, more than worthy of, of spending time sort of watching as well, aren't they? So that's obviously what we're going to get from you guys when we do get to see you play. Well, you know, uh, yes and no. Um, uh, to be honest with you, uh, I mean, I, I love all those uh, uh, musicians that you just mentioned. You know, Vi is like my, you know, my big brother. Uh, and as much as Steve Luca there as well, you know, Steve gave me my first break here in Los Angeles. So always, you know, uh, grateful for him. And, and I admire their playing and, and all of that. However, I think we're good, but we're not, it's not that we're not that good. It's just like where they go in musically, some, uh, it's not really what this is all about. No, because um, uh, what they do, it's part of uh, of a show and a, a mentality of approaching, uh, you know, a show in a particular way. We're yeah. kind of like way more sixties than that. Meaning, we know where we start. I mean, even on the songs, there are the song songs. 
Mm-hmm. It's the same approach that I use with, with Supersonic. And then I don't you know, feel bad about saying it because it's like it's a totally different repertoire. So it's not that, you know, creating conflicts. It's just it's the same type of approach. Okay, this is the song. Well, then we know how we start. We know how we end. Whatever happens, happens. And it's more free, improvised. It's more hippie than that. It's more uh, tribal and it's more um, almost jazz without being jazz in terms of like the music notations of jazz but it's that yeah. kind of stuff where you have a the, the 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 theme the reference and then just go for it you know so it's more that kind of stuff and you know one night might be you know the jam could be you know on at the end of right down below more like on a kind of like a reggae background and uh, tomorrow night uh, right down below just lasts as long as it lasts on the on the studio version yeah. and we're stretching another song that it's actually it's a slow blue so it, it i don't know it depends we just leave it open it's very <laughs> very fresh so it, in like a lot said, of ways that's that's more exciting as well because it's a, a more spontaneous experience isn't it yeah 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 absolutely and that was always the because I, I you know after all these years working with all these monsters and everything i kind of like i needed a a fix and, and since i do not live in the uk and i'm not friends with keith richards and mick jagger i needed <laughs> to have something that was a little bit more rolling stone yeah. uh, approached you know i have a, a good friend of mine bernard fowler who has been singing with a song song with the stones for almost 20 something years yeah. uh, a couple of years ago we were just trying to put something together when we released the movie sidemen as a music uh, as a movie independent documentary that talked about the life of uh, uh pine top perkins uh uber sumling and uh willie blue eye uh, willie big guy smith uh, yeah. the musicians behind howling wolf and uh muddy waters and um uh, is calling me and I was about actually to go on the plane and everything for to put together some of these interviews for the show. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hey, where you at? So oh, I, mean, I need to call you back later because the time is not, sorry, now you're leaving, but you know, I'm going to be standing in the rehearsal. So, where are you? I'm in New York. I'm about to start two weeks of pointless rehearsals with the Stones. And I'm like, yeah. what do you mean two pointless? Yeah, because it doesn't matter. We could be rehearsing for a month. We will never play the same song <laughs> twice, you know, the same way. So, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, Keith starts, uh, Charlie starts, whatever it is, and just, but you know, within the first two to four measure, then the whole thing clocks in and boom, and then yeah. you got the songs, you know? So, you know, I, I, I never had a band like that, and I just, that's our kind of like attempt to kind of like live it as free, as free spirit as possible, you know? Right, I've got, yeah. I mean, your, your CV reads like a who's a who of, of, of the rock world. You know, if you're looking down the Wikipedia stuff and all of that, um, it, it's incredible. And you could name drop all evening, couldn't you, in terms of the people that you've worked with. But who, who's sort of given you the most inspiration for your songwriting? Whoa. Uh, songwriting? Uh, um, songwriting in terms of like uh, what the song is about and all of that in terms of like on the lyrical you know, lyric standpoint and everything yeah it's uh, you know like I was saying earlier it's like definitely uh, Bob Marley Marvin Gaye um, you know all green yeah. Bob Dylan John Lennon you know those kind of guys you know mm-hmm. for sure that's but the, that's the lyrical content of the song Okay. When it comes down to the actual music itself, it depends, I mean, obviously by the genre or where kind of like you settle in in terms of the colors, but the stuff that it's for me in terms of like Soul Garage or um, Supersonic or for when I'm involved directly as an artist and only as a producer to co-write with somebody, I, I think that the writing comes from a mix of all these, uh, a mix of all the music that I grew up with. It's not like one specific person. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of, again, there's a lot of stones, but there is also uh, a lot of cream, big time. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, uh, you know, Marley on a few things. Uh, our agent, actually, uh, our agent for Supersonic is also agent, uh, um, Soul Garage Experience, Neil O'Brien, actually, is, it's London-based. Uh, it was making me notice how... Uh, what kind of like a clear reference to the clash uh, uh, right down below head. And I never really thought about it, but to be honest with you, I grew up with London Calling and Sandinista. And I think all those sounds uh, from back then, you know, are kind of like it always stays with me regardless that if I wander off to more like of the hard rock scene and all of that. But I think in, of all the people that I work with uh, as far as musicians, that uh, kind of like really gave me um, an inspiration on songwriting, or so kind of like at least like uh, 
I'm, I'm using some of their guidelines when I have to approach a songs. Mm -hmm. I would say um, for ex exuberance, Glenn News, of right. course. Yeah. But in terms of actually the, the song structure and approach to the songs, two guys overall, Leslie West and Billy Gibbons. In other words, keep it simple, yeah. uh, keep it there. I'm, you know, even though, again, Vi gave me my first break and I played with a lot of like very flashy musicians and back then that's what it was. Yeah. I kind of like went completely the opposite. I mean, if I cannot play it just with one finger, then it's not good for me, at least on what I'm doing. And I, it just, you know, I'm just trying to go for a different message. And Billy with that is fantastic. He always says, you know, don't bore us, get us to the chorus. You know? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to go as simple as that, but you know, there is like a, a, a genuine um, simplicity that kind of like a really um, connects with people. And I can tell that actually it's working because, uh, uh, talking with Billy about songwriting, I mean, it's like for us, it's not really a science. I mean, you just come down and you play it, but it's like it's the result of all these lessons and all these influences. But it's the fact that we were talking about, for example, uh, the English language that you hear yeah. on international music from Sweden uh, to Japan to German to everywhere around the world. Mm -hmm. The majority of people obviously end up in singing in English or in Spanish. I mean, those are the most spoken languages in the world. Yeah. But I mean, minus Indian and Chinese, of course. But uh, the, um, the English that is used, sometimes it's not the English that you guys will learn at school. And uh, as a writer, maybe you would write a book or a, an article, but it's way simpler. I mean, you ended up in delivering the same concept, saying the same thing, but in a way that the Japanese guy that speaks English, uh, the Chinese guy that speaks English, the Italian guys that speak English, or uh, the, the Mexican girl that speaks English can easily understand what you're trying to say without diminishing the intensity. And if you go to all the good songs from, again, from Lennon to yeah. even Bob Marley and if Billy Gibbons or even Leslie West, that element is always there. So in other words, dude, don't play Shakespeare on me because no, even in England, they will get it right now. Yeah, you know, no, it's, just, it's a different thing. It's just to be, be simple. And I kind of like try to use that approach also to the musical. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a combination. But these guys, I would say on the songwriting are probably the biggest influences, at least as far as guidelines, not necessarily as far as sound or style. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, like um, from the album, can you tell us are there any real surprises in there? You know, you're talking about um, an eclectic sort of mix of musicians. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything that sort of stands out as being totally different on the record? Uh, well, as, as I uh, generally like to describe supersonic blues machine music as uh, um, 50 Shades of Blues, or actually your uh, uh, Peter Noble actually uh, said that, you know, supersonic blues machine music was, uh, it's California soul is actually supersonic blues machine music, which actually I found that quite amusing. Um, this uh, record, this, this Soul Garage experience is, is a project just like that. So every song that you hear, uh, there is an element or more than one element uh, common that keeps the whole thing together and will let you yeah. understand that you're dealing with the same entity. However, where we're going with it is not necessarily the same. Um, I would say the if I need to kind of like give a descriptions of this band, I think it's more in tune with contemporary artists like Fantastic Negrito, uh, um, Vintage Trouble, uh, you know, Rival Songs or Gary Clark Jr., uh, mm -hmm. Marcus King. It's more that kind of stuff. So, uh, and the Black Keys, you know, big fan of the Black Keys. And I, and I like that thing because uh, that kind of like 60s that relates a little bit to the R&B and blues, but kind of like in a white way, I yeah. think it's a very rich uh, uh, baggage that I'm bringing uh, along from Italy. Because in Italian music from the late 50s and the 60s were like incredibly structured around those kind of sounds and everything. It was not blues at all, but you have all the old scene of the spaghetti western and all the soundtracks, those like big reverbs and guitars uh, yeah. sound. Those sounds, believe it or not, didn't come from California. And Dick Dale actually was... Alex, my keyboard player, his father, uh, Maestro Alessandroni, 
was the guitar player, arranger, and whistler for the Ennio Morricone band, was the guy that actually started that whole movement. So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm bringing all those kind of uh, elements together. So you're going to have songs that will remind you more of some of these artists that I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, Right Down Below is probably the most evident reggae influence song. But even though you don't really have something like that throughout the record, you're going to find a lot of those kind of like uh, reggae subtone in a lot of other songs. Uh, so uh, it's not really like surprise in terms of oh, all of a sudden, oh, we resurrected Michael Jackson and he's singing one song or yeah. that kind of stuff. No, I, we're already doing all the super crazy friends and stuff with uh, Supersonic Blues Machine. I wanted to make this about the message and not get it distracted by uh, yeah. the guest. There's a lot of great musicians on their standing, so they don't need any additional support or help. I think this is all about the music and the story that we want to tell, you know? Right, I've got you. Yeah. Um, are your wife and your daughter involved in this one as well yeah. as the with the other ones? Yes, as I as I call um, as we call them, they're the super sonnets. <laughs> uh, um, Andrea's my daughter, Francis, my wife. Um, they've been obviously singing with Supersonic Blues Machine sometimes with along with other singers as well. You know, Ladonna Gale, Eric's uh, wife, sings with us sometimes. Um, but they actually they would say they're the main core of uh, uh, you know the, our backing vocals and um you know obviously they know me more than ever and it's easier for me to uh kind of like uh, get things done quickly and get them involved live i'm not really sure because again um we're gonna try to do something that i don't want to kind of like uh, again go out with you know is this the b-side of super sonic blues machine it's nothing like that even though i'm making references because we're dealing with a lot of the same people and somehow we're in the same sales uh yeah yeah uh, but um no it's also you know with uh you know my daughter and my wife it's, it's a family thing you know it's uh, mm -hmm. just like it happens with supersonic where we have uh there's music all around they always hear me playing stuff or preparing things or listening things in the car so they already know the songs even more than me before i go in and my wife obviously is a, is a phenomenal singer on her own right and uh yeah. she but you know she has collaborations up to the wazoo i mean talking about really you know credits from jennifer lopez to you know uh, Jan Anderson to uh, Enrique Iglesias, uh, you know, and, and gone and on and on and on on her with Miguel and all these people. And she's a great vocal coach too. So she's got these credible ideas in studio and stuff. And my daughter is particular because she's like the little, you know, actress, you know, singer. And right. we, we never really wanted her to kind of like get into this, but she started, you know, she follows, us, you know, uh, when we were traveling and playing and she always been around to sessions and stuff. So when she was little, uh, she's always been around with all these people. So it, it's great because you got somebody that is young, has got a new um, attitude and take on everything without necessarily being starstruck and having a good relationship with everybody. One thing that I always say that's really funny for me, is like my daughter was just like two years old. She had like a bunch of toys and everything. And that's yeah. when I was actually, I was recording um, and was producing a record for Glenn News uh, titled Soul Mover. All right. And, uh, Chad Smith from the Chili Peppers uh, was the drummer. It was a great band. We had a, I mean, it was one of the, the happiest time of my life and one of the, the album I'm most proud uh, of the work that I did. Mm -hmm. um, we were in my home studio uh, recording some stuff and we wanted to start to add some percussions, right? And, um, and I, on a couple of songs, I had this thing since, you know, both my wife is from Venezuela. Uh, I work with a lot of Latin artists and I continue to do that. So I have a lot of kind of like ears towards the percussions and all of it. And Santana is, again, another one of mine. Probably was the biggest guitar hero. The first one that really got me together with the Bob Marley stuff. So I always had those, like the congas, the timbales, you know, and all these different patterns and stuff. Mm -hmm. And Chad was actually a great sport to it. Glenn was like, oh, okay, you got, you lads do whatever it is. I'm going to, you know, I'll see what, what you're coming up. And, but we didn't really have percussions around because that was not the idea. It was supposed to be like, uh, you know, them playing live, do the whole thing and some overdubs. Yeah. Uh, my daughter was bringing to the studio, you know, a little tambourine and toys, percussion. So the stuff that you hear on Super uh, on Soul Mover is actually my wife's, uh, my wife's, my daughter's toys, percussions. Right. Uh, I let Chad Smith borrow them and and play her own thing. So she's always been around music, and I guess it was just like a natural, you know, development for that. You know. And and I guess as well, like you were just saying, um, because she sort of grew up with it, she wouldn't be intimidated by the people that were around her either, whereas most of us would have been just like rabbits in the headlights. No, actually, exactly. It's, uh, yeah. No, actually, that's probably more me than her. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, we, we ended up, I think it was like uh, three, year, three years ago, we headlined uh, with Supersonic at the Mahindra Blues Festival in Mumbai. 
yeah. it was like the first time in India for all of us. And uh, since it was like a big deal, um, that's like was actually one of the first time that we really had the full blown uh, uh, backing vocal, female backing vocal section. You know, again, with uh, Eric uh, Gales, who was one of our guests, and LaDonna singing together with them. That was like my, my daughter's first show with the band and herself like on a big stage. So I was like on the biggest soundstage in Bollywood and, uh, and singing along Billy, Eric Gale, Shamika Copeland, and, you know, and a bunch of, <laughs> and she was like, oh, cool, like app and everything. And Billy was like, man, I can't believe uh, how comfortable your daughter is, you know, and it was like always like doing his thing, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, she calls him Uncle Billy, Uncle Willie. So, you know, just to give you a vibe, you know, it's a very fab, that's why, uh, you know, it's, it's a band and I wanted to give credit to everybody involved with this because like it happened with Supersonic, sure, I might come up with a lot of things and might direct a few things, but at the end of the day, it's a team, it's a team effort, you know. And, and I would imagine to a certain extent, you'll all bounce off each other as well. So you probably come up with different stuff because of those guys. Of course. I mean, when you yeah. play with musicians like that, it's just, you do this. it's just, it's nonstop, you know, it's nonstop. And, and the, the, kind of like you know i'm I'm using an iphone and uh, so there is a feature we let you record like notes yeah and i mean i have a thousand because every time that we're out doing something you know uh, even on even driving here and there you know somebody say something or whatever it is or just you know doing sound check and always recall no no hey replay that hold on let me let me turn yeah. you know. so <laughs> it's it's just you know it's great you know you don't even have enough time to develop all the ideas that are being put down i mean i have materials for another four albums if you wanted to but yeah. you know, one <laughs> thing at the time right absolutely there's always plenty to fall back on yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> So when can we expect the album to be uh, coming out then, Fab? Okay, uh, for Soul Garage Experience, uh, um, uh, Counterfeited Blues for the Solstice. I mean, that's the, the full, the full uh, title. I mean, Solstice is a game of words. You know, it's not Solstice, but Solstice. I mean, just wanted to make yeah. it cool. Uh -huh. um, it's going to be released towards the end of January. Right. But you're going to get a couple of more songs and a couple of more videos. Um, leading into it and we'll give you probably a better idea and a broader idea of what's going on. I mean, again, everything gets very connected thematic wise and, you know, sound wise and all of that. But, you know, every song has got its own little world, you know. For sure. So um, is there going to be another single before Christmas then? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, actually, uh, oh, wow, we already started in November. Yeah, so probably in about a month. I mean, I, I, I do not have the whole calendar in front of me, but yeah, probably around the first week of December. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I can wait because it's another, it's a, it, you'll see. <laughs> I'm not say anything. I mean, I know you were saying about obviously the single came out and you said there was the equivalent of a B side that came out that's available on iTunes, which mm -hmm. I picked up as well. And it's got, like you were saying, a, a similar vibe, but it's got kind of another developing sort of, um, theme within within the music so i'm really looking forward to hearing the rest of the album now thank you well um, i hope you enjoy it i'm sure i will and hopefully we'll get a copy for a review and we'll get that out to the uk people yeah mm -hmm. well the like i said since i did the whole thing independently um i wasn't really planning to have like records per se but yeah. funny enough i've been getting so many requests that probably we're gonna set up uh on, on a store store section yeah. Uh, on uh, my page, by the way, everybody is watching and listening to this is uh, www.fabriziograssi.com or www.soulgarageexperience.com. Both, uh, uh, you know, links and domains will take you to the same page. Yeah. You can get all the updates about what we're doing, the tour dates, whenever we'll be able to tour. But also there's going to be, uh, you know, links to listen to the songs, uh, to, you know, Spotify and all the other stuff, check the video. And, you know, on the store section, we're probably going to end up in having something like that. Like I said, we're getting a lot of requests for it. So, you know, we were leaving it as an option for us to take live. Yeah. But probably it's something's going to be accommodated earlier. But let's see. The, 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 the good thing about for me doing it independently is that uh, I, we can change and uh, whatever we need to change and do whatever we need to do whenever we want to do it. You know, with the label. And again, I'm not trying to put labels down. They fed me that's my majority of my work comes from labels and i'm really grateful to work with a lot of labels mm -hmm. um but sometimes a label you're not the only person working in there and there are like already a lot of political things they're going around the schedules that is already prepared and yeah. uh, you know and all the work plans and stuff and sometimes you know as an artist uh, you want to be you want it to be heard now or next week i don't need to wait 
nine months just because you have three other people that you need to serve. I understand and I respect the other guys, but yeah. uh, I cannot wait nine months. So, and again, again, that doesn't mean nothing. It could be that maybe, you know, we had some more songs or maybe we ended up in having being stores, but I like the fact of keeping, you know, all the options open. Yeah. For sure. And I mean, it, it, like you're saying, it's kind of, it's your project and it's on your terms because you're holding the, the purse strings. Yep, exactly. For yeah. once. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Fab. Oh, um, thank you, Simon. Thank you, guys. Very much appreciated. And hopefully we'll catch up again in the future. And fingers crossed we'll see some shows again and um, we'll maybe get you over to the UK and, and get a chance to catch up properly. Yeah, I cannot wait. I mean, as I, as I tell all my friends and all my fans uh, in the UK, it's one of my favorite places in the world. Yeah. There's only this, you know, UK, Spain, and I guess a little bit of Italy are the places where I, I love to hang the most, you know, beside the plane. I mean, I like to play everywhere, but it's like, because uh, they're part of also of my childhood, my growing up. I mean, I grew up in Italy, but, you know, I used to come to the UK in the summer uh, to study English uh, a couple of times. And I used to live in London, very close to actually... Um, um, Shepherd Bush Empire. That's why when we play there for me, it was like very emotional. Yeah. So I'm I'm very I'm very attached to your country. So I cannot wait to be to get there as soon as possible with the with our clan. Excellent. Well, fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you very much. Cheers for your time. Thank All you the best, Bob. Thank Bye. you.